It's my pleasure to present my uh, latest research work at the uh, IRSEC uh, 20. This work was done uh, at the uh, IMED lab. As we know, uh, so the use of uh, core resources of energy, uh, such as oil and uh, carbon, uh, which are uh, li uh, limited resources and uh, polluants, uh, leads to think about uh, using alternative uh, uh, sources of energy, such as uh, wind and uh, solar energy. In addition, uh, there is a need uh, to reduce the emissions uh, of CO2 uh, through the electrification of the motor road transportation. So these alternative or re renewable energy and the uh, electric vehicles uh, need devices where the energy must be stored and then used uh, uh, at will. Uh, for us, lithium-ion batteries are uh, the best uh, devices uh, to do it. Uh, in my case, I am interested in uh, materials with st spinel structure, uh, especially the material with this uh, a general formula, lithium nickel manganese uh, oxide. And uh, why this interest? It's because uh, they work at a uh, high potential of uh, five volt, so they guarantee uh, high capacity and uh, high density of energy. However, this kind of material suffers uh, capacity fading at high rate capability. Uh, I can al already tell you that we solved the problem of, uh, of uh, this uh, fading uh, capacity. Uh, by uh, doping the material uh, using a uh, chromium element. So we've got excellent uh, electrochemical properties. Uh, I can tell you that we've got 92% uh, retention uh, at uh, 60 C discharge and uh, very good uh, uh, density of energy and very high power of uh, 31 kilowatt per kilogram. Uh, however, uh, when I show these uh, results, usually I get the, the typical uh, uh, remark that uh, chromium uh, might be very toxic, especially at the, the oxidation state of plus six. So our approach is to substitute the chromium by another element which might be less uh, toxic, like uh, cobalt in this case. So we would like to, to synthesize a material that is uh, eco-friendly. Why the, to choose cobalt? Uh, so cobalt uh, is uh, uh, located between manganese uh, and nickel, so it has a similar uh, chemical and uh, physical uh, properties of uh, manganese and nickel. In addition, it is a neighbor of uh, chromium, so they have uh, quite similar uh, radius and quite similar uh, mass, uh, and that uh, might help to maintain the similar uh, potential operation uh, uh, potential operating, sorry, potential and uh, the same capacity and um, similar uh, delivered energy. In addition, as I said, cobalt is less toxic than chromium. So for the preparation, we used the uh, co-precipitation method. Uh, we mixed metal transition uh, sulfates. Uh, then, uh, and we, we maintained the pH uh, at uh, 11. Then uh, we filtrated the precipitate. Uh, it was dried uh, over a night at uh, 120 degrees, then mixed to the carbonate of lithium uh, during two hours in a mortar and uh, cooked uh, at uh, two temperatures, two different temperatures, 800 degrees and 900 degrees uh, during uh, 10 hours. And we got uh, different mat materials <clears throat> with different contents of uh, cobalt at uh, two different temperatures. So the content of cobalt uh, went from uh, pristine to 0 0.1 uh, content of cobalt. In terms of structural, structural characterization, uh, the XRD analysis revealed that uh, we got uh, uh, pure materials uh, with spinal structure and uh, the desired uh, space group. For the morphological characterization, characterization uh, we had uh, materials prepared at 800 degrees with a similar uh, particle size around uh, 300 nanometers here and here. And uh, for the samples prepared at 900 uh, degrees, we got uh, uh, two distributions of uh, the particles, one 
in a region that are called the uh, submicrometric, uh, which is uh, small, around 800 nanometers, and one uh, which are called micrometric, which was uh, uh, around 1.4 1, 1 uh, micrometer. So we had two distributions in two regions. In terms of uh, electrochemical uh, properties uh, for the voltage profiles, we got the uh, typical voltage profiles of, of uh, this kind of materials, uh, which uh, are composed of uh, one plateau uh, with two steps of the oxidation and reduction of uh, the nickel, uh, represented here uh, in the CV with the, these two peaks. And we have a small, uh, small plateau around four volt uh, which is due to the residues of manganese 3 plus. In terms of cycling behavior, uh, we plotted the, the discharge capacity uh, in function of uh, cycling number. And here we can uh, distinguish between the, the samples prepared at 800 degrees and 900 degrees. So we have always the, the retention capacities uh, are lower in the case of the samples prepared at 800 degrees. Uh, they are not over 91%. Meanwhile, the one prepared at 900 degrees uh, have a retention capacity uh, of over 95%. Uh, uh, I, I can add to this that uh, if we check the pristine uh, materials, uh, we have uh, quite good uh, retention capacity at uh, 1C rate discharge. So as I said, the problem uh, comes when uh, we pass to high rate capability. In fact, if we see the pristine one here uh, in blue, we have at 30 C at very high rate capability. We have a, a drop of capacity and uh, this can be represented here uh, by a retention of uh, less than 37%. Uh, I represent here uh, the pristine one uh, in, uh, in yellow or I showed them in yellow to highlight them uh, and to be clear for, for the audience. And we can see that uh, uh, we have uh, no more uh, than 37% uh, thir retention in this case. Meanwhile, the best results were obtained for the samples prepared at 900 degrees with uh, the two uh, content of uh, cobalt uh, with uh, over 66% uh, of retention. But I can uh, uh, highlight the one uh, with the 0 0.05 uh, content of uh, cobalt. Uh, so it has 71% uh, retention with a capacity of 86 milliamp hour per gram. And that means that uh, it can deliver energy density of 406 watt hour per kilogram and the power uh, of 12.2 uh, kilowatt per kilogram. So after uh, investigating the sources of uh, problems. Uh, the main uh, source of problems uh, in our case, we think it is uh, coming from, from uh, the degradation of the, the electrolyte. And this is uh, due also to the uh, specific surface of our uh, materials. So the main difference uh, is the morphological one. So as we can see here, uh, we have a small particle size in the case of sample prepared at 800 degrees and uh, two distribution in the case of the samples of uh, 900 degrees. So to prove that the degradation of the electrolyte is the, the cause uh, of uh, the bad uh, uh, properties of uh, the samples prepared at 800 uh, degrees, uh, we used the uh, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy technique. So in this case, uh, I can already tell you that, that, uh, that uh, usually we have a formation at the surface of the electrode uh, of a uh, solid uh, electrolyte interface, which is a very resistive uh, um, layer, and uh, that doesn't help the lithium to, to go through it and to, to, to enter into the bulk of our uh, electrode. So usually uh, for, uh, for the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy, we can have uh, for lithium for lithium ion batteries, uh, we can have this kind of, um, of uh, behavior. So at the beginning, we have a, a resistance, which is a small shift that will appear here uh, on the Nyquist diagram. 
And then we have the resistance uh, due to the say, uh, which is uh, the one due to the degradation of the electrolyte and the formation of the uh, fluorid of lithium uh, at the surface of the electrode. Then we have the, the resistance of uh, charge transfer, which uh, is uh, in the interface between the say and the electrode, where the electrode uh, are coming to meet uh, the lithium. So this is represented by, by another uh, semicircle, and we have a kind of uh, parallel to the axis, uh, kind of line, line parallel to the axis here, which means uh, the diffusion of the lithium inside the bulk of the electron so the main the or the most important uh, thing to to pay attention to is this resistance that that uh, if it increases that means that we have uh, more degradation and we have more difficulties to to put the lithium inside our, our electron so in the case of uh, our samples we can see here clearly that uh, for the 800 degrees samples here on the top so we have uh, before cycling uh, we have this uh, small resistance due to the say, but uh, after uh, the cycling, uh, 50 cycles, uh, we have this resistance that uh, increase, but after 30 C, after cycling at 30 C rates, we have very big semicircle. That means that this resistance increase. We can see this more clearer in this case. So we can see that uh, before cycling, for the sample, for the samples, uh, we have a similar, uh, uh, more or less similar uh, uh, resistance uh, of say, but uh, when after uh, after uh, 50 cycles, this increase and it increases even more after 30 C rates. Uh, if you compare the results we obtained here. We can see that for the the resistance of the say, it is always under 800 ohm in the case of the samples prepared at 900 degrees. This means that we have less degradation in the case of uh, samples prepared at 900 compared to the ones prepared at 800 degrees. And this is uh, the main reason why the the samples prepared at 900 degrees resist more to the rate capability. Uh, I can add also that uh, the difference, the small difference can go back here and the small difference that uh, we see here uh, might, might be uh, at, uh, attributed in this case to the distribution that is uh, we have here in the case of the samples prepared at 900 degrees with 0 0.05 uh, content uh, of uh, cobalt, uh, more small particles. Uh, then in this case, we have more uh, big, bigger part particles in the case of 0 0.1 uh, content of cobalt. So we know already that, that uh, theoretically, the small particles uh, should work better uh, because of the short path uh, to introduce the lithium inside the, the material. But uh, in the reality, we have the additional uh, condition of, uh, of uh, having the electrolyte degradation. So uh, these small particles help to, to, to have the lithium inside uh, the, the pill and the, the bigger one avoid the, the big degradation of the, of the electrolyte. Meanwhile, in this case, uh, we have a, a longer path uh, for, the, for the lithium to, to go into the, the electrode and a longer path to, to come out or to be extracted when, when we are uh, charging our material. So uh, as a conclusion, uh, I can tell you that we have prepared a uh, material uh, with a simple uh, and low cost uh, co-precipitation me method. This material uh, exhibited uh, uh, excellent rate uh, performances at a very high uh, rate capability. So a full discharge in two minutes, keeping uh, 86 milliampere uh, hour as a capacity per gram, and uh, having as a as a sorry as a capacity, and here as a power 12.2 kilowatt per kilogram, and as energy 400 watt per, per kilogram. Uh, this is due to the peculiarity of the dispersion of the particles, which is in two regions, one submicrometric and the other uh, uh, micrometric. 
uh, and this helps to improve the rate capability in this case. Um, also, this uh, material exhibited the best performance at high rate capability reported for uh, cobalt doped uh, spinel materials to date. And uh, we could prove that uh, cobalt uh, is an excellent substitute to chromium in order to obtain more environmentally friendly material to be used as a positive electron for lithium ion batteries. At the end, I would like to thank uh, all uh, my team, our uh, director of uh, IMED lab, uh, Professor uh, Ismail Saidun, and uh, our uh, head of, uh, of uh, team, Mohamed Lamansouri, and uh, also our PhD student, uh, Rita Garhi. I thank you for your interest. And if you have any question, you can always ask them uh, online. Uh, you have uh, my email here, or you can even uh, ask them during the, the IRSEC 20 event. Thank you very much.